Every generation, I suppose, sees the time in which they live as being exceptional. The truth of the matter is, you do live in a most exceptional time in the history of mankind. You young people will see events transpire which were promised from the beginning of the world. Prophets of old have seen your days and rejoiced in them. And yet you will face challenges and circumstances, the severity of which has been unparalleled in generations past. For this, you must be prepared. Today I speak to you about the times in which you live and about the quality of faith you will need to survive some of the difficulties yet to be experienced. I speak of one who loves you and has been given a responsibility with my brethren to testify and warn about the impending crises faced facing mankind. Yes, I speak to you to the topic, prepare yourselves for the great day of the Lord. So today I shall quote liberally from the words of the Lord to our dispensation in order that you will have from the Lord himself guidance on future prophecy. What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world or the destruction of the wicked which is the end of the world? The Lord has designated these days in which we live as the times of the Gentiles. The Gentile nations are the so-called Christian nations, North and South America, and the European nations from which many of us came. The times of the Gentiles refers to the period of time extending from when the gospel was restored to the world, 1830, to when the gospel will again be preached to the Jews after the Gentiles have rejected it. This is how the Lord explained it. Quote, and when the times of the Gentiles is come, has come in, a light shall break forth among them that sit in darkness, and that shall be the fullness of my gospel. But we will know when the times of the Gentiles are approaching fulfillment by these signs. And in that day, continuing, shall be heard of wars and rumors of wars, and the whole earth shall be in commotion. Men's hearts shall fail them, and they shall say that Christ delayeth his coming until the end of the earth. And the love of men shall wax cold, and iniquity shall abound. And again this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come, or the destruction of the wicked." Unquote. Are we not witnessing the fulfillment of these signs today? Atheism, agnosticism, immorality, and dishonesty are flaunted in our society. Deserting, desertions, cruelty, divorce, and infidelity have become commonplace leading to the disintegration of the family. Today we live in the times of which the Savior spoke, when the love of men, as he said, shall wax cold. The rejection of the testimony of the servants of God by the nations of the world will bring the consequence of greater calamities, for the Lord himself declared, quote, for after your testimony cometh the testimony of earthquakes, 
that shall cause groanings in the midst of her. And men shall fall upon the ground and shall not be able to stand. And also come out the testimony of the voice of thunderings, and the voice of lightnings, and the voice of tempests, and the voice of the waves of the sea, heaving themselves beyond their bounds. And there shall be men standing in that generation that shall not pass until they shall see an over an overflowing scourge, for a desolating sickness shall cover the land. But my disciples shall stand in holy places and shall not be moved. Yet men will harden their hearts against me, and they will take up the sword one against another, and they will kill one another." Unquote. The world will present a scene of conflict such, such as has never been experienced before. Still men's hearts will be hardened to the revelations from heaven. Even greater signs shall then be given to manifest the approaching great day of the Lord. Quote, and they shall see signs and wonders, for they shall be shown forth in the heavens above and in the earth beneath. And they shall behold blood and fire and vapor of smoke. And before the day of the Lord shall come, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon be turned into blood, and the stars shall fall from heaven." Unquote. I realize this is an unpleasant topic on which to dwell. I take no delight in its portrayal, nor do I look forward to the day when calamity shall come with increasing number upon mankind. But these words are not my own. The Lord has spoken them. Knowing what we know as his servants, can we hesitate to raise a warning voice to all who will listen? that they may be prepared for the days ahead. Silence in the face of such calamity is sin. But to be otherwise, but to an otherwise gloomy picture, there is a bright side, the coming of our Lord in all his glory. His coming will be both glorious and terrible, depending on the spiritual condition of those who remain. One appearance will be to the righteous saints who have gathered to the New Jerusalem here in America. Another appearance of the Lord will be to the Jews. To these beleaguered sons of Judah, surrounded by hostile Gentile armies, who again threatened to overrun Jerusalem, the Savior, their Messiah, will set his feet on the Mount of Olives, and it shall cleave in twain, and the earth shall tremble. Judah will be spared, no longer to be persecuted and scattered. The Jews will then approach their deliverer and ask, what are these wounds in thine hands and in thy feet? I will say unto them, These wounds are the wounds of which I was wounded in the house of my friends. I am he who was lifted up. I am Jesus that was crucified. I am the Son of God. And then shall they weep because of their iniquities. And then shall they lament because they persecuted their king. What a touching drama this will be. Jesus, prophet, messiah, king, will be welcomed in his own country. Saints of Zion, 
Do we realize, do you realize we are living in the days of the fulfillment of these signs and wonders? You are among those who will see many of these prophecies fulfilled. Just as certain as was the destruction of the temple at Jerusalem and the scattering of the Jews, so shall these words of the Savior be certain to your generation. We know not the day nor the hour of his coming. But of this you may feel assured. You stand close to the great day of the Lord. In his words of modern revelation, we say to you, seek the face of the Lord always. You will live in the midst of economic, political, and spiritual instability. When you see these signs, unmistakable evidences that his coming is nigh. Be not troubled, but stand in holy places and be not moved until the day of the Lord come. Heed the Lord's counsel to the saints of this dispensation. Quote, prepare, prepare yourselves for the great day of the Lord. And this preparation must consist of more than just casual membership in the church. You must learn to be guided by personal revelation and the counsel of the living prophet so you will not be deceived. You must protect and safeguard the freedom you have. You must be wise and virtuous. You must govern your natures by the doctrine of his kingdom. You must be valiant in your testimony of Christ by keeping all of his commandments. Will you be among those who are faithful to the end? Will you endure? Are you prepared? Can you live in the world and not partake of the sins of the world? Will you arise and shine forth as the Lord has commanded? Will you be a light and a standard for the nations? We know you can. We pray you will. We have every confidence that you, the rising generation, will not falter. I repeat. You are valiant spirits reserved for this exceptional time. Make the choice. Rise to the task of this momentous hour. As a special witness of our Lord, I humbly declare to you that he lives, that he is close to his servants, his word shall not pass away. But shall all be fulfilled. Whether by his own voice or by the voice of his servants. It is the same. 